There's a certain time of day and a certain time of year when the sun sets and the weather cools, where the leaves change and the winds chill. Light retreats, darkness advances, and imagination takes over. It all occurs during that brief period of time known as the Twilight Tower Zone. Decades ago, this telephone was the epitome of human communication. Now, with its archaic buttons and faded finish, it sits as a relic of an era long gone. Enter Miss Heather Roos, who, like most of us, remembers the days when a ringing phone eventually had to be answered. Hello? We have a mutual agreement between us. We film here, and they do whatever they do back there. They don't ask questions, and we don't ask questions. Ah! Ah! Sorry? What are you doing? This phone was ringing. I thought I heard someone on it, but I couldn't make it out. Well, it's unplugged, so... Could have sworn. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be in the green screen room. Just join me in there when you're done, okay? Heather? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll be right there. As Miss Roos is about to find out, sometimes the best answer to a ringing phone is to leave it off the hook. Otherwise, you run the risk of listening in to a long distance call straight from the heart of the Twilight Tober Zone. Long distance call is notable on several grounds. It tells a spooky tale in a minimalistic setting and uses what you don't see to unnerve the viewer. Add a creepy little kid into the mix, and the result is an effective Twilight Zone story. Little Billy Bales is celebrating his fifth birthday, as his beloved grandma joins in the festivities following a health scare. The old woman clearly covets the boy, as they are closer than Billy's mother would prefer. After gifting him a toy telephone, the grandmother becomes ill again, which leads to her death in the upstairs of the home. Soon after, Billy begins constantly talking on the toy telephone, and when his parents confront him about it, he says the deceased grandma is on the other end of the conversation. Worse yet, the voice he hears may be trying to convince Billy to join her in the great beyond. There's much to break down about the behind the scenes aspects of this episode, so we'll discuss that first before going into my opinion on the story. Long Distance Call was the last episode to air of the six in season two that were shot on videotape in an attempt to save some cash on the expensive show. While they did reduce the cost by about $5,000 per production, the benefits of using film outweighed the budgetary issues, and at Rod Serling's urging, the series went back to shooting on film in March of 1961. I will say though, this episode, with its camera setups and such, comes across much closer to the filmed episodes than most of the other taped ones. The script was originally submitted by William Idelson, who appeared as an actor on The Twilight Zone in the episode A World of Difference. He would later go on to write for The Dick Van Dyke Show, The Flintstones, Happy Days, and a whole bunch of other series, but this was the first script he sold. He was friends with Richard Matheson and Charles Beaumont, who of course were the other writers on The Twilight Zone. Beaumont liked the script enough to help Idelson rework it so it'd be accepted as an episode. They ended up splitting screen credit for the job in the final piece. Working as a real estate agent at the time, Idelson stated that he based the story on a real-life occurrence that he fictionalized. His mother got his son a toy telephone for the kid's second birthday, and after seeing her talk to him on it, the idea was sparked. 
After this episode hit the airwaves, he quit his job and became a writer full-time. However, this was another one of the installments that got hit with a couple of lawsuits by people who submitted scripts for the show. Settlements were made, but from what I found, the only similarity was the element of a magic phone. James Sheldon returned to direct his third episode and would work with child star Billy Moomy again in the more well-known installment It's a Good Life the following season. Moomy is very recognizable to Twilight Zone fans for his three appearances. While he may be most famous for playing Will Robinson in the original Lost in Space series, he still acts to this day and is fondly remembered as a pretty creepy kid actor in roles like this one. Now his character in It's a Good Life is much more menacing, but his ignorance to the eerie situation he's in here reads as a bit spooky. She wanted to know if I can come stay with her. Can I, Mama? Can I? The overuse of the head tilt is funny, but also a bit uncomfortable. There's a scene where Chris, Billy's dad, explains why his mother was so infatuated with the child. She had two children before me. She lost them both. She just couldn't let go. I was all she had. Except for Billy. But Billy was me again. A chance to go back. To pretend out all those other years never happened. It's a short scene, but succinctly adds some shading to the grandma character, and a little background to her relationship with her son's family. After finding out that Billy jumped in front of a car because the voice on the phone told him to, Chris and his wife, Sylvia, are relieved to see it was just a close call. Still thinking the boy is playing pretend, Sylvia becomes legitimately frightened when she enters Billy's room that night and takes the phone out of his hand. She listens in and hears the breathing of Chris's mother. Sylvia screams and drops the phone, which triggers Billy to run down the stairs and attempt to drown himself in the pond outside. Paramedics arrive to save the boy, but the odds aren't good. In a last-ditch effort, Chris picks up the toy telephone in Billy's room and pleads with his mother to let the kid live. Immediately after his supplication, Billy starts to respond to treatment and is said to be okay. The Baylisses embrace in solace as Rod's narration wraps up the story. Chris's appeal to his dead mother was actually rewritten on set by Idelson and Beaumont after Serling requested a last minute change. Philip Abbott delivers the monologue very well, as it's one of the best parts of the episode. If you really love Billy, give him back. He's only five. He hasn't even started. He's hardly been out of this room, out of this house. There's a whole world he hasn't even touched. I really like this one. It's successfully creepy in its concept and execution with solid performances and writing. We never hear the grandma's voice on the phone and don't have to. Just the suggestion of it was enough. Long Distance Call is a recommendation from me for sure. Dial it up where you can to check it out. And the next time you get a call from a number you don't recognize, it's probably someone trying to tell you your car's extended warranty is expired. Rachel? Is that you? Hello? Rebecca? This is Heather. Who is this? Rebecca, hi! How's the job going? You've got to tell Donnie I said hello. You've got the wrong number. Rebecca? Don't you dare hang up on me. It's the role of a lifetime. We can't miss out on this. I don't know what you're talking about. Hello? Who is this? I told you. This is Rebecca. Tell yourself a lie for long enough, and eventually you'll believe it. Case in point, Miss Rebecca Stone, and a life-changing conversation with a dark destiny that drew her inside. The Twilight Tober Zone.